Greetings, fellow mortals. Just a reminder, saying it's just my opinion is for cowards. I'm not going to flinch back if someone wants to argue with me, even if it's the stupidest argument I have ever heard. Now, I was going to wait a bit before making this video. I wanted to get through the end of season one at least, but I do not think that they're going to course correct, and I really wanted to talk about my adventures with Superman. This has not been the best year for cartoon adaptations of old properties. Remember Velma? I sure do, not that I want to. Too. But I think something has become very clear with this trend of adapting popular IPs in a new way. The creators and writers are doing this because there is no possible way that their ideas are going to be greenlit on their own merit. This is both a bad and a good thing. I always lament on how Hollywood and large companies refuse to give new ideas a chance. They only want to use old properties with a guaranteed audience. They'd love a new property like Rick and Morty to make up absurd amounts of money out of nowhere, but they refuse to take risk to achieve these new characters and stories. Alright, here's the painful truth for everyone that is not a writer. What a person writes says a lot about them, and I don't mean in terms of just quality, like cohesiveness and the ability to keep a storyline going without contradictions. That's the outline phase. Anyone can do that part with enough effort. No, I mean the themes and lessons placed in the show, movie, game, or book. The point of what they're trying to write. That says a lot about what they think about and do not let any writer or fake creative type or hack get away with saying otherwise. They're either lying or wrong. A piece of writing cannot simultaneously be a piece of your soul bared to the world and also say absolutely nothing about who the writer is as a person. You want some examples for myself? Here are some of mine. Written in Stone is a political fantasy series about how different cultures and people have different values, how far a leader should go for their people, and how no one with political power can be a completely moral person. Cage Demons is a series about struggling to keep fighting when there doesn't seem to be any reason to keep living. Above Heaven is a sci-fi book about holding on to dying relationships and ways of life that only lead to worse consequences. Dragon Skin is a fantasy book about hardening oneself to face the world, freeing yourself, and taking the life that you want in your own hands. All of these things are what I was thinking about at the time that they were being written. And those are just some out of 32 books that I've written. Even stuff that I'm writing now is focused on my inner thoughts. Someone very close to me died recently, so I'm writing a ghost story. And that's all I have to say about that. I'm honest about these things because that is what writing is. It's telling an elaborate lie to find a fundamental truth, something that the author truly believes. It may not be an objective truth or anything, it could just be a feeling and that's okay. Knowing this, here's the biggest problem with my adventures with Superman. Everyone behind the scenes feels very insecure about the fact that they're not as good at their jobs as they want to be. They found out a secret from a lover or a significant other that they could couldn't handle. They feel guilty about the fact that they adore everything about anime. They actually love Superman, but hate that they do because he stands for the American dream. Also, they're really, really, really horny and they feel terrible about it. Now, from the outside, that seems to be a lot of speculation, but I stand by everything I just said. I'll go backwards through the list. The horniness is simple. Superman and Lois are drawn to be as appealing as possible. The shots and angles are intentionally done to make Lois look attractive while not taking away from the fact that she's a strong, independent woman. And Superman is just thirst bait for women. 100%. He's everything that the women behind the scenes fantasize about. At the same time, they feel terrible about this. Now, you might be saying, love of storytelling, it's not that horny, but it kind of is in comparison to all of the other western cartoons out there. All of them are either all about humor or all about sexualizing minors, like Big Mouth, please burn it with fire. And everyone behind the scenes feels terrible about this, so they compensate by making terrible designs for other male characters to break stereotypes and add plausible deniability for what really gets them off. But really, changing Slade, Deathstroke, the Terminator into this is just lame.
One thing I have to give the show is that at first, it got who Superman was. He's a simple country boy that loves people and will do anything to protect innocence. That is his top priority. They got that, even if they toss it away sometimes on a moment's notice for a joke. One of the reasons that they chastise him, though, is because Superman is about the American dream and what it should be. Not what it is, but the ideals of treating people humanely and judging them by the contents of their character. But because he is the American dream, they're not allowed to like him too much because Americans have to lash ourselves every few minutes because our government is filled with a bunch of terrible people making horrible horrible decisions. And because our ancestors were terrible people who did terrible things to other people. It's not like, you know, every single person has ancestors like that from all across the globe. No, that's not a thing at all. And just because of all that, no one is allowed to like the ideals that we should strive to be. Hate the system, not the people. Now, the anime influence is obvious in the animation style. The tropes are thrown out at us left and right, except the fan service ones, of course. But they're jumping back and forth from slice of life to shonen without any cohesiveness whatsoever. And they're throwing everything at the wall this first season without anywhere else to really go because they're deeply afraid that they're going to get cancelled. So there's no attempt to start slow and build up like a classic manga because anime is secretly advertisement for the manga and the show doesn't have that. My Adventures with Superman has to survive on its own merits and um... <laughs> I think I'm dying. But that's okay. Now, this new trope about finding out a superhero's secret identity has been popping up a lot lately. Invincible kind of shattered it, but I didn't really care about it back then because I thought Amber was the most boring character in the show. I don't get mad because they made her too perfect and too flawless. There was nowhere to go with her. That was the big problem with the show. There was the stuff with Omni-Man, which was interesting. Then there was everything else. Boring, dull, pointless time-killing filler. And that's what Amber was, a character meant to fill time that no one is supposed to care about. So her calling Mark out didn't affect me all that much. I was on my phone waiting for something to actually happen that was interesting while that scene was going on. But this one made me laugh though, because this was so stupid. Just because other Lois Lanes threw themselves off of buildings doesn't mean that this is not stupid. Women are not this stupid. Plus, why did she expect Clark to be so open with her? They'd known each other for what, a few weeks? They weren't in a long-term committed relationship that was over six months. Why does he have to tell her all of his secrets? Especially when she was the one who swore to reveal everything about Superman. Especially when he hardly knows her. Especially when she lies and has secrets constantly. It made me think that Clark should have brought back the Man of Steel mentality for about five seconds for this show. We'll do this the hard way. And finally, the feelings of inferiority behind the show, the imposter syndrome, the feelings that they're not nearly as good as they should be. My God, does this bleed out every five seconds with Lois in the second half of this season? It started out strong, but then the creators realized how stuck they were, how they didn't have the capabilities to fulfill their vision. That became abundantly clear when the Multiverse Council of Ricks, but for Lois Lane, popped up because a character can't can't just be a normal person. When around someone with exceptional powers, they need a boost. The insecurity is real. None of the creators feels good enough, so they push that into Lois, turning someone who is a journalist, a writer, into something far more. The center of the known multiverse. And boy, is that boring. Never mind the fact that it would have been a lot more interesting to simply have Lois be someone without anything phenomenal about her, but still achieving great things while working with Superman. Her reporting and digging below the surface could be just as important as Superman's powers. She could start police investigations. She could expose corruption in the government and in large corporations. She could sway public opinion. She could spread 
the message of hope that Superman represents, encouraging people to be better than what they are, to strive for an ideal that seems unobtainable. In that way, Lois could be equal to Clark, just like she looks up to him for how he uses his powers, he could appreciate her artistry with words, her revealing the truth, and her spreading the message to the people. Answer. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Isn't it fascinating that these writers don't think that what they do is good enough, that the form of writing isn't powerful enough, that they don't hold enough influence and sway? All they see is another form of greatness and feel insignificant. It is truly depressing. And that's what My Adventures with Superman is. It's a show where people feel like they're not good enough. Their original ideas can't get greenlit without tying it to an already existing property. They don't have the skills to complete their vision how they want to. They don't think that writing is powerful enough, and that is insulting to me personally. I believe that writing and storytelling is the most beautiful form of art there is. It can change the world. Never underestimate the power of words. If you don't feel good enough, then work at what you're doing instead of using this show as an outlet for your insecurities. People, see what you're doing. Use this as an opportunity to show a great passion that you hold dear in your heart. Something that you think needs to be said. You may think that I'm being harsh here, but guess what? Writers are getting pretty complex. Complacent. They're getting way too comfortable with mediocre content and they need to be called out. Even if their corporate masters are telling them to do this, they need to work with it and turn chicken crap into chicken salad. I support the strike because everyone deserves to be paid fairly for their work. But if you're getting paid to be on these projects, you need to be held to the highest standards possible. I know it's hard putting your work out there, but that's what it means to be a writer. Two of my books are already ready to be torn torn apart by people who might possibly hate me. I accept that. I welcome it because that's what it means to have the guts to write and bear your soul to the world. You're welcome to disagree with me. After all, everyone is entitled to their objectively wrong opinion. Done. Huh. Now let's see how it looks so far. The... Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and to continue the discussion in the comment section. And please consider giving my books, Above Heaven, Dance of Frozen Death, and Vows of Blood and Honor, which will be released in September, a chance. I appreciate you. Do not despair.